so you can see, I've added our thread here in the usual manner, and I've worked one row of single Brussels across and anchored to the other side. And now I'm going to work back again in single Brussels stitch. I'm going to do one stitch here on the end through the coordinate, under the coordinate, and then work in each stitch back. Now, when working single Brussels, it does tend to roll just a little bit on you. So be very careful with your tension, very careful with your placement, pulling your stitches perpendicular to your work. And in this case, that's a curve, so it's perpendicular to the stitch that you're working. Another thing to remember when you're working needle lace is not to split the threads, especially in thread like this where it's very loose, well, loose weave, loose twist to the thread itself. Um, I don't want to split the two white threads and, and come between them. I want to be sure I catch the entire piece of thread because that will show in your work. It makes a fuzzy appearance if you do that. Likewise, you wouldn't want to accidentally go through part of the green thread. Again, I have to support my work as I tension. And this is just Brussels stitch, single Brussels. And you do work in both directions, coming towards you and going away from you in this stitch. tends to roll and I don't particularly care for that. This is one of the stitches to me that seems to be harder to master even though it is the stitch that almost everything is made from. It is the starting stitch for the needle lace but when done singly by itself repeatedly for rows it becomes a skill to master. When you get to the other side, you anchor it as you always do, going underneath the coordinate. And that is our single Brussels row. And then from there, it is possible to go into another stitch, if you'd so like, and switch to a different stitch or continue in the single Brussels. You would do that again up into this line. 